After all this, it remains unclear whether it even matters if Palin or Gingrich is the one doing the actual speaking tonight, with Palin's camp now claiming that a speech of hers last week was not largely plagiarized because she credited two lines to her source, Newt Gingrich. Discussing Ronald Reagan last Wednesday, Governor Palin quoted Gingrich twice. Recently, um, Newt Gingrich, he had written a good article about Reagan. He, he said regarding your dad, Michael, he said that we need to learn from his example that courage and persistence are keys to his historic achievement. What Newt had written in this article, he wrote, remember how refreshing it was with his outrageous directness that Americans loved and craved and deserved that Reagan dealt with with then the troublesome Soviet Union. Remember this? His vision for the Cold War? We win, they lose. The only problem, the article was written by Newt Gingrich and a co-author, Craig Shirley. The only other problem, all the apparent unattributed lines, according to Huffington Post, it included this one from Gingrich and Shirley, quote, Reagan replaced the entire vision of detente with two vivid words, evil empire, palinized. Speaking of detente, he used two words, evil empire. Quote, Reaganism is about real change both at home and overseas, and that real change requires upsetting the entrenched interests. Palinized. Reagan knew that real change, and real change requiring shaking things up and maybe ticking off the entrenched interest thwarting the will of the people. After that, let's turn to MSNBC political analyst Lawrence O'Donnell, also, of course, a contributor for HuffingtonPost.com. Thank you for your time tonight, sir. Good to be here, Kate. Um, uh, why should Republicans really have gone through this uh, rebirthing exercise here uh, over whether or not Sarah Palin was going to speak tonight, since the other option was to get the original version of, uh, of her script anyway, written by or read by the guy who wrote it? Well, Sarah Palin has become a symbol, Keith. She is the most, the most visible symbol you can hold up in Republicanism to say, I am a conservative, I am aligned with a conservative. John Cornyn needs Sarah Palin tonight at that fundraiser because he's run into some troubles. He has the thankless job of trying to elect Republicans to the United States Senate. He's a Texas conservative Republican himself. But when he recently uh, endorsed uh, Florida Governor Charlie Crist in a Republican primary for the next Senate seat uh, in Florida, he got himself into some real trouble with the, what you could now call the Palin wing of the party. And so he needs to have uh, Palin beside him, get a picture taken with Palin beside him tonight. And also at, at these fundraisers, a lot of the donors, the $1,000, $2,000 donors who show up there, they want a celebrity. They want a star. And there is no other celebrity in uh, the Republican Party right now. Now, she is the Paris Hilton type of celebrity, which is to say unearned celebrity in, in, uh, in any sort of governmental sense, uh, governor of, of, in effect, the smallest states in terms of governing uh, demands. And so she's it. She's the best they can do in terms of, uh, here, you know, if you pay us a thousand bucks, stand beside her, get your picture taken. Uh, uh, to this uh, original point here of plagiarism, can you litigate that for us? Is uh, guilty, uh, not guilty, guilty by reason of... Uh of uh, she likes to crib from other people, people's work. What, what's the what's the answer to the charge? Well, good enough to get her kicked out of Harvard or any other real academic institution. Uh, but in the world of politics, uh, plagiarism is a very tough charge to make stick. Now, Craig Shirley uh, has uh, had an amusing exchange with the Huffington Post uh, today, in which he suggests this is the handler's fault. I mean, he's clearly uh, suggesting that there's a problem here in this, and there was. I mean, there's I, I, there's no question Sarah Palin uh, did not write that speech. Uh, her her writers did. The writers know, or the writer sitting up there in Alaska knows very well that this is plagiarism, that he dug into the book, uh, dug into the, the, the article and, and stole all that stuff. There's a lot of paraphrasing in it, but there are some very direct, direct word-for-word -word lifts, and that is officially plagiarism. So that's the handler's fault, and presumably it's whoever, whoever lit that, that stage there that made her look like she's gone punk and dyed part of her hair purple. <laughs> so we'll, we'll give her a pass on those, but, but, but the problem here is at some point before 2012, if she's a viable candidate for anything other than what she has now, does she not have to render herself capable of intellectual thought on a national level? And it, more so, does she really have to stay away from a guy who, I mean, even the idea of, of, of being reminiscent of the writings or the sayings of a guy who might be her rival, uh, as odd as that might say, uh, seem to say out loud, for the 2012 nomination in Gingrich? 
Well, there's no one happier about this story than Newt Gingrich, and his spokesman is saying, we're very happy that Sarah Palin used Newt Gingrich's material <laughs> for her speech. They are thrilled. And, yeah, this, this just deepens her problem, is that there is no there there. There's no substance there. The party knows it. Uh, even the party faithful uh, know it, uh, because they know that, that she would, in their terms, be faithful to their most simple and most serious uh, demands, which are fidelity on the abortion issue and, and the, these simple yes or no questions that they want in their candidates. But uh, she is a, 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 a bridge to nowhere for the Republican Party, and there's not a thinking Republican who does not know that right now. And there's the other thing, the temporal one, the idea of evoking a time that never actually happened. There's an irony here, the Republican face of this decade has apparently cribbed from the face of the 90s, who was praising, you know, the face of the 80s. Do we have an ideological split in the Republican Party, a geographical split. We have a temporal one, too. How do you build a forward-looking party that spends two-thirds of its time looking back? This, this is the problem, and this is not really the way Newt did it in the early 90s when he built that party. He was looking forward. He was offering a contract with America. Forget the specifics, whether it was real or not, but he certainly was advancing a future agenda. Uh, and the, the, one of the big problems with Reagan is that he's a mirage, too, historically. I mean, they look mm -hmm. back and, they, and they, don't, they, they don't admit that he ever raised taxes, which he did, uh, both as governor as and as president. And, and there's all these things within the Reagan biography that don't fit the fake sainthood that they have uh, granted the Reagan political career in retrospect. And so as long as they're looking backward like this, it is great for the Democrats. Lawrence O'Donnell of MSNBC and Huffington Post, uh, who always writes his own stuff. Thank you, Lawrence. <laughs> have a great evening. Thanks, Keith.